Hello, first graders. This is Saxon Phonics Lesson 110. It's actually an assessment or a test. It means that teachers usually give these to students in order to see what they do know or what they don't know, what they still need to learn. But I'm not giving it to you as a test today. I'm giving it to you so that we can review some of the things that we've already learned and so that we can play a game. But I'll tell you that part in a minute. It will be up to your teacher whether you're supposed to turn this paper in and get points for it or if you just show it to somebody at your house to say, oh my goodness, look how much I know, look how smart I am, okay? So we'll start with our retired deck. Remember, these are the cards that we don't do every day. These are the cards that we only do like once a week because you've gotten so good at them. And there's a lot, look, there's so many. But I think you know them all. So let's get to it, starting digraph, EE. -E. Ready? Digraph, EE, -E. combination, Q, U, Q, digraph, A, I, U, digraph, A, Y, trigraph, I, G, H, O, W, U, consonant, E, T, Z, I, L, M, S, A, consonant, E, D, F, H, R, K, E, I, consonant, E, E, consonant, E, X, Y, digraph, S, H, digraph, O, O, J, V, final syllable, B, L, E, final syllable, F, L, E, final syllable, P, L, E, final syllable, D, L, E, final syllable, T, L, E, final syllable, G, L, E, A, P, digraph, C, K, N, digraph, N, G, digraph, T, H, O, consonant, E, C, B, digraph, E, E. Woo! That was a lot. Good work. Okay. Let's move to our picture cards. Just to warn you, I did mix these up from last time, so they might even be harder than you remember. Starting zebra z, -z. ready? Zebra z, -z. rain a, hay a, nest n, cheese ch, light i, thimble th, feather z, -z. lion o, sheep e, umbrella a, uh. Unicorn U, octopus A, uh, overalls O, wagon U, cake A, fox X, yarn Y, dime I, shark Sh, hook U, uh, tooth U, jar J, concrete E, vest V, bubble bull, staple pull, hose O, cat inch i icicle i candle dull bottle toll bugle gull pig p tent t ruffle full apple a acorn a sun s rose z duck k dog d right fish f hat h goat g Rabbit, r, kite, k, cube, u, balloon, b, monkey, m, elephant, e, eh, equal, e, ring, n, zebra, z. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, that was a lot of cards. Okay, and our suffix cards, starting suffix t, d, ed. Ready? Suffix t, d, ed. Suffix ing, suffix li, suffix s, z, suffix es, suffix ness, suffix e, suffix less. Nice job. Okay, we would normally do our spelling sounds. We would, uh, I would say it, you would say it, you would tell me what letters make that sound, and we would just say it out loud even though we don't have a worksheet on which to write it. But we're not going to do that today because we had so many letter cards and picture cards. You did such an awesome job on those retired decks. So what I wanna do is jump straight to the game. 
And if you did the game with me last time, you'll already know how this works and you should be really good at it. What you're welcome to do, either on a whiteboard or on a piece of paper, is write a letter T for teacher. That's gonna be me, Miss Smith. And a letter S for student. That is gonna be you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give us a word to spell. You have to spell it and code it correctly in order to get the point. So I'll give you the word, you'll spell it, we'll check it, and whoever gets it right gets the point. So if I get it right, I get a point. If you get it right, if you get it right then you would get a point too. But if we don't get it right, we have to fix it and only one person gets the point. So you'll want to keep track of the points so you can see who wins, me or you. And I'm telling you right now, I'm pretty good at this game. Don't be scared. Okay, first word. Spell for me the word lake. What word? Lake. So on my whiteboard, I'm spelling L-A-A-A-K. And the spelling signs are over here if ever you need to remember. Hmm, what says k, -k, k after that long vowel? L-A-A-A, -a -a after long vowel. Okay. Time's up, let's check it. Lake should be spelled L-A-K-E, and we use A consonant E, make on the A, cross out the E, K-E after long vowel A to say K. I got that one right, so teacher gets a point. If you also got it right, then give yourself a point on your board. And when I say erase, erase, if you have a whiteboard, you can erase it. If you're using paper, just go to the next word, erase, erase. Next word, mm, choppers out. Tell me the root word and suffix in raking. Root word suffix raking is rake, ing. Root word is rake. For a, 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 a. Add your suffix, make it say rake, ing, rake, ing. And don't forget, you have to code it. Okay, I feel pretty good about this one. You ready? Let's check it. Root word rake should be R-A-K-E, because after a long vowel, use K-E with a suffix I-N-G. Wait a minute. First graders, I think I forgot about the dropping rule again. Dang it. Do you remember our dropping rule said? If an E comes in front of a vowel suffix, and I know that's a vowel suffix because it starts with a vowel. If an E comes in front of a vowel suffix, you drop it, you drop it, you get rid of it. Dang it, so I should have actually spelled it R-A-K-I-N-G. Oh man. Okay, so teacher won't get a point that time, but if you remembered the dropping rule, I guess you can take a point for you. If not, I hope you fixed it. Erase, erase. Next word is a word that tells us when there's smoke coming out of the chimney. Get your choppers ready. Tell me the root word and suffix in smoking. Root word suffix smoking is smoke. Ing. Root word is smoke. Add your suffix, make it say smoke, ing. Make on, <gasps> I almost forgot something. Okay, ready, let's check it. Smoking should be spelled root word, S-M-O-K-I-N-G. <gasps> this was so close. Because at first I spelled root word smoke, after a long vowel, use K-E. And then I remembered, whoa, whoa, whoa. If an E comes in front of a vowel suffix, you drop it. So I quick erased it. Woo! Yes! Teach.
Rich gets the point. Remember, if you got it right, you can add your point for you too. Erase, erase. Next word. Uh, let's do some oi words. Spell for me the word foil. What word? Foil. Think about what says oi, oi, oi in the middle of a word. I'll give you a clue. You can look over here. It's one of these that reminds us what says oi in the middle of a word. Don't forget to code it. Wait, why am I helping you? It's okay if you want to forget to code it. Okay, time's up. Foil should be spelled F-O-I-L. We use O-I in the middle to say oi, oi, oi. Yes, teacher gets the point. Erase, erase. Next word, choppers out. Tell me, this is a word that means if it's wrapped around and around and around really tightly, like in a circle. Tell me the root word and suffix in coiled. Root word suffix coiled is coil. Nope, let's do that again. Coil d. Can you do it one more time? Coil d. Root word is coil. Oi, 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 oi. Coiled. Don't forget to code it. Okay, let's check it. This is a tricky one. Coiled, I should use C in front of O and then spell it C O I L D. Coiled. Wait a minute. Coil. Oh, you know what I just remembered? If we have a root word coil and we hear the d sound at the end of it, we can't just add a plain old d to the end of a root word. If we hear the d sound at the end of a root word, oh man, it has to be spelled suffix ed. Man! And then of course we would need to box the suffix. Man, I did not do very, very good on that one. Okay, so teacher doesn't get a point, but if you got it right, you can add a point, and if not, I hope you fixed it just like me. Erase, erase. Next word uh, is two syllables. Will you get your clappers out? Clap with me the word value. Ready? Val, you. First syllable, val. Then think about which digraph do you know that says vowel u, u, u at the end of a word. Give you a clue, there's no letter Y. Which digraph says u, u, u? Okay, let's check it. Value should be spelled V A L U E. This is digraph U E says U at the end of a word. Oh man, I just realized I remembered to code digraph UE, but I forgot that anytime you have two syllables, you have a vowel pattern. A is a vowel, UE is a vowel, consonant, split it after the first consonant, breathe above the A, vowel, U. Man, okay, so even though I spelled it right, I guess I don't get the point. Erase, erase. Ooh, maybe you forgot to split the vowel pattern too, and then that means you didn't get the point either. I hope, I hope, I hope. Next word, uh, let's clap it. Clappers up is a two syllable word. Clap with me the word argue. Ready? R, U. First syllable, R. Think about which combination says R, R, R. Finish it, make it say R. U. Think about which digraph says U, U, U at the end of a word. There's no letter Y in this word. And it has to be coded. Okay, ready? Argue should be spelled combination A R G U E. Did you get it? Digraph UE says U, U, U in argue. Oh, brother. 
Do not tell me I forgot the vowel pattern again. What? Because isn't it two syllables? Are you? Yep. Then I should have split it between the syllables. A is a vowel, U is a vowel. Consonant, consonant, split the syllables. R, U. Man. Oh, I gotta do a little bit easier word so I can catch up. Did you get it? I hope you didn't get it. Did you get it? Shoot, some kids got it. Erase, erase. Next word, hands up. Clap with me the word nation. Ready? Nay, shun. First syllable, nay. Think about what final syllable says shun, shun, shun. I'll give you a clue, there's no sh in this word. What final syllable says shun, shun, shun. Code it. Ready? Okay, let's check it. Nation should be spelled N A. T-I-O-N, final syllable, T-I-O-N. Bracket the syllable, and then of course, when you cover it up, it leaves an open vowel. Code it with a acron, which means, yes, teacher got a point. Oh, finally, catching up. Erase, erase. Next word, this is a word that means like a magical liquid. Clap with me the word Potion. Ready? Po shun. First syllable, po. Add your next syllable, make it say po shun. Po shun. Ready? Okay. Potion should be spelled P O T I O N. Final syllable, T-I-O-N, says shun. Uh, bracket the syllable, and of course, if you cover it up, it leaves an open vowel as long. Code it with a me. Uh, whoopsies. <sighs> okay. I forgot the make run over my O, so I don't get the point, but I'll, maybe you forgot the make run over the O, too. And then I could still win. That's what I'm gonna hope for. Erase, erase. Try not to try to try to forget to code the vowels. That's what I want you to do so that I can win. Next word. Hmm. Let's do an easier word. Spell for me the word spill. What word? Spill. Wait a minute. Spill. Spill. Okay. You ready? Let's check it. Spill should be spelled S P I L L. Because don't you know this is a floss word? Spill is one syllable. Spill. It comes after a short vowel. Sp I I I. And it ends in L L, the L sound. So we use L L. Whew which means teacher got a point. Remember, if you got a point, you should be adding your point too. Erase, erase. Last word before we move to round two <sighs> has a root word and suffix. Chopper's out. Tell me the root word and suffix in smelling. Root word suffix smelling is smell-ing. Root word is smell. Wait a minute. Smell. Smell. Add your suffix. Smell. Ing. Smell. Ing. I think I did really good on this one. Okay, let's check it. Smelling should be spelled. S-M-E-L-L, -L, cause it's another floss word. I-N-G. Box the suffix and abbreviate. Wait a minute. Oh, why do I keep forgetting to code the vowels? Dang it, I should have done abbreviate above the E to show it's followed by a consonant. 
man. <sighs> but I still have five points. So I could still win because we're on round two, last round. Here's what I want you to do. Take your board or your paper, whatever you have. Will you split it in half? And on the first side, will you write digraph A U? Underline it to remind us it says ah, ah, ah. On the other side, will you write A W? To remind us it says ah, ah, ah at the end of a word. And here's what I want you to do. I want to see if you can remember which picture goes with each of these digraphs. So draw me the picture that goes with AU says ah, AW says ah. I'll give you a clue for AU says ah, it's something you use to get water from. Something that might be like in a kitchen or a sink or something. Wait, why am I giving you a clue? I shouldn't give you a clue. Okay, then for AW, draw the picture that reminds us AW says ah at the end of a word. Give you a clue, it's super long and skinny. Wait, 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 why am I giving you a clue? No clue. Okay, did you get it? Let's check it. You should have drawn for digraph AU, faucet ah, for digraph AW, straw ah. Will you say it with me starting faucet, ready? Faucet ah, straw ah, nice job. So if you got both of these, you get two points. If you only got one of them, you get one point. If you didn't get either of them, fix it right now. Teacher gets one, two points, <gasps> which means I got seven points in this game. Woohoo! I hope that means I won. I don't actually know because I don't know how many points you got. But seven is kind of a lot. So just show me thumbs up or down if I beat you. Thumbs up means yep, I beat you. Thumbs down means no, I didn't. Oh man, so many kids are saying thumbs down. Dang it. You know what? I bet it's because I forgot to code my vowels. Those tricky little vowels will get you every time. Okay, let's come to our worksheet. And remember, you can turn this into your teacher or you can just do it at home to see what you know and to show somebody in your house what you know. You don't have to turn it in and get points for it though. This is just to see how am I doing with phonics. So because it's an assessment, I'm not going to help you with it. I'm just going to tell you the words and you're going to write them down. But I won't actually put them down too because it's a test. Okay, number one, up at the top. Ready? Choppers out. Tell me the root word and suffix in faking. Root word suffix faking is fake. Ing. Root word is fake. Start root word fake. If you need to look up here to see how to spell the k sound at the end of that word, fake, go ahead. Add your suffix, fake ing, fake ing. Okay, number two, ready? Get your choppers out. Tell me what's the root word and suffix in spoiled. Root word suffix spoiled is spoil d. One more time. Spoil, d. Root word is spoil. Add your suffix, make it say spoiled. Spoiled. What suffix says d? Okay, number three. Would you get your hands up and clap with me the word rescue? Ready? Res. Q for syllable res. Finish it, make it say rescue, rescue. Think about which digraph says you, you, you.
Number four, would you get your hands up, clap with me the word lotion. Ready? Lo shun. For syllable, lo. Think about which final syllable makes it say shun, 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 lo, shun. And number five, choppers out. Tell me the root word and suffix in telling. Root word suffix telling is tell, ing. Root word is tell. Add your suffix, tell ing, tell ing. Okay, then we're coming downstairs. Whew. Will you match all of these digraphs to their pictures over here? Go. And as soon as you have that part done, we're going down to number nine. And this is just coding. It's to see how well you know the coding section. Guess what? I bet you're better at this than your parents are. <laughs> I bet you are. Number nine, code it to show toast. What word? Toast. Number 10, code it to show gold, fish, goldfish. Think about what do you do if there's two words, goldfish. Number 11, code it to show hall. Hall. Number 12, code it to show see, saw, seesaw. And again, think about what if there's two words, how do you code it, see, saw. This next section over here would be for you to read these sight words to somebody so they knew if you knew them. And then down here, what you would do if you were really taking the test is your teacher would say, what's that called? And you would say, digraph OA. What does it say? Oh, oh, oh. What's that called? Digraph AU. What does it say? Ah, ah, ah. Digraph AW. What does it say? Ah, ah, ah. And that's how you would do that part. Okay. Flip it over to the back, and we have a little story about a, a girl named Amy. I'm just going to read it to you this first time, and then I'll let you read it by yourself in just a second. Okay, it starts, Amy wanted to hear a bedtime story. What story do you want me to read? Asked mom. Well, I like the one about the three little pigs or the three bears, said Amy. Mom read the story about the three bears. She read about the girl eating the bear's grits and how she slept in their beds. Amy said that the story made her hungry and sleepy. So mom made her a snack and Amy went to bed. Okay, here's what I want you to do. I'm gonna give you like maybe a minute, maybe a little bit longer. I want you to read this paragraph all by yourself now. If you finish early, I want you to start over. Just keep reading until I say stop. Ready, go. Okay, stop. It's okay if you didn't finish. It's okay if you did finish. It's just a practice reading on your own. Now we're going to answer the questions. Come down to number 19. Who wanted to hear a bedtime story? Will you write her name on the line? Who wanted to hear the story? Number 20 is kind of tricky. Listen so closely. It says, what story did Amy not ask her mom to read? There was one of these stories she didn't ask for. Was it the ugly duckling, the three little pigs, or the three bears? Will you fill in the circle? Which one did she not ask her mom to read? She, she didn't ask for it. Then the last one says, what do you think grits are? 
Do you think it's bears, books, or food? Grits. Is it a bear, book, or food? And if you need to go back up and read it in the story and find the word grits there in the middle, you can do that. You can go back and read it again. The bottom section we won't do because it would just be you telling somebody how these words go together with the pictures. So like the boy is swimming because you see the boy swimming right there. But I think that's all we're going to do for this test. Oh, I really hope I won the game. I wish I knew. Okay. Bye, first graders. Have a great day. See ya.